Okay, we are live, and we're about 42 minutes early, about 42 minutes early on a pregame show here. It's May 31st, 2021, and this is an emergency broadcast on Mid-Atlantic TV. Gold prices are slated to increase significantly throughout the year, throughout 2021. Buckle your seats. Gold prices are on the way up. And we're already seeing it with gold watches heading up. So stand by for for big prices, folks. Big prices on the way. Go for the gold. Two thumbs up. Go for the gold. All right. And so there we have a titanium stunner on the bench, on the bench, because on wrist we have gold. We have a gold stunner, SBGY002 on wrist. And then the faux pay on the other wrist. And there you go. Craigship.com. That's where you can find all my social media links at Craigship.com. Let's get these banners off. And we can get into the show. And I will repeat some of this later because I am starting early. Carlos is in the house early. And this is an emergency broadcast. So if you take a look here on... My laptop, I did a simple search, 18238, 18238, date date. And the prices are, are through the roof, folks. They're through the roof, and some of them aren't even the greatest watches. I did pick out one that I think is a pretty nice unit. Let me show it here. This unit is pretty impressive. I love the dial. It's in pretty decent condition. It does have a little bit of stretch. But it's pretty pretty sharp. See, it does have a little stretch. That's a little more than, than, you know, the way it comes. But still pretty good, pretty acceptable. And the fluted bezel, the bezel is not worn down smooth. It's got, you know, pretty good fluting to it still. And so I would say overall this watch is in pretty good shape for an 18238. <clears throat> and it's it looks like a... a a good piece, a good piece to make a move on, but close to $20,000. Now, of course, it's still here. It hasn't sold yet, but you can see here, this, this watch has a buy it now price of basically $20,000. That watch should be more like 14,000. It prices are going up folks. Prices are on the way up. You heard it here. You heard it here. This is an emergency broadcast. And I'll tell you the other thing that's going to happen. The other thing that's going to happen is gold prices in general are going to be going up this year. Gold is going to be going up. So fasten your seatbelts. Silver is also going to go up. So fasten your seatbelts for all of that. Never thought you would let go of the diver. The only reason I'm considering selling the, the 231 Stunner Diver is I really love wearing the 002. And that would force me to wear the 002 all the time because I wear that right now as it stands, I wear the 231 most of the time. And so as a consequence, I have to kind of like force myself to wear the 002. I'd rather it be the other way around. I'd rather kind of have to wear the 002 all the time. And so that's why I would probably sell it. Um, Craig, are you thinking of replacing the diver with an inferior watch? No, 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 no. The 002, still have the snowflake. No, I sold my snowflake. Okay, so no, 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 no. The 002, this is the SPGY002. It's far from inferior. This is the finest dress watch ever made. And I've made the argument before on the channel that this could be an all-arounder because of the deployment class works so well. It's so comfortable on wrist. It's extremely robust because it's a spring drive movement. This could be an all the time, wear anytime watch, and it's super comfortable on wrist because of the strap, because of the shape of the case, because it lays so flat on the wrist. It is this is actually more comfortable than the um, day date that I had for many many years. I had a couple of different day dates, but basically eighteen two three eight was the model that I had most of the time. I had an eighteen oh three in the early days, but basically 18238. This is more comfortable than that. You're selling the 002. No, 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 no. I'm considering selling the 231 
so that I can wear the 002 all the time. That's what I'm considering doing. But the 231 is not advertised anywhere, so I'm not actively trying to sell it. Uh, but no, the 002 is not on the market, and the prices on the 02s seem to be climbing. The ones on Kono 24 are all over list price. Of course, Kyle, who's in the house here, he saw one in at the uh, dealer in and ostensibly, I mean, I guess we, I guess that uh, can be bought for list. Um, so anyway, O2 is a keeper. Absolutely, O2 is a keeper. I love it. I love, love, love it. It's the best watch I've ever had all around for just general. Just if I had to take all the watches I've had and say which one is the absolute best, it would be the O2, the O2 Stunner. It's absolutely the best. Uh, let's see. Hey, Craig, divers should be worn. Otherwise, dump it. A nice watch for a younger, less established man. I do wear the diver a lot. That, see, that's the quandary that I'm in. I do wear it a lot, but I want to wear the 002 more. That's the issue I've got. I, I mean, you know, I'm not going to wear two watches, one on each wrist. And so one has to be on the wrist and one has to be on the bench, right? And as it stands now, the O2 is on the bench more than I would like. That's why the the 231 is uh, is on the chopping block potentially. The O2 is a keeper, yes, absolutely. And um, what about extreme sweat? How does the strap hold up? Joey been in the house. You know what? That's I mean, uh, Brianna's strap, and she wears her watch all the time. Her strap, also made by HD Straps is holding up great the only part of it that's showing anywhere is where you she has the buckle that uh and where you flex it and put the pin through the hole it's showing somewhere a little bit of stretch on that hole but see this wouldn't have that problem i have the deployment clasp the rest of her strap is is really mint condition and she's been wearing that watch every day for six months and she works out in it i mean she wears it all the time she doesn't swim in it and i wouldn't swim with this but other than that she wears it all the time and it is holding up great i think that this these people saying that leather straps like fall apart because of sweat i i, I don't i don't think they know what they're talking about um in terms of actually and build quality i don't even know what would beat the 002 no nothing could beat it nothing could top the 002 it's it's the top of the top um 231 beats the 002 in accuracy. Yes, the 231 is more accurate than the 002, but the 002 is pretty accurate. <laughs> I mean, it's accurate enough. Um, and it runs a little fast, so it's very easy just to pull the crown out and stop the second hand for a few seconds and push it back in. So it's very easy to, um, you know, to to uh, get it back, back in sync. But yeah, the 231 is probably the most accurate spring drive that there is. Uh, I think it. I think they broke the mold when they built that one. Can Steve get a deployment class for Breeze Watch? That uh, We were just talking about that. Um, and what we've decided to do is we're going to wait until she wears out all the straps that she has. She has like, I think, three or four high-end straps made by HD Straps for her watch. So we're going to wait until she wears all of those out or gets close to the last one being worn out. And then we're going to aggressively pursue getting a deployant clasp for her watch. Um, because we're going to have to get all new straps. The, the straps are different for the deployant. And so we don't want to waste the straps that she has. So she's going to wear all of them out. And then we're going to aggressively pursue getting a deployant for her because she would love to have a deployant she loves the deployant on the 002 and i don't blame her so i think we'll be able to get one it won't be cheap but i think we'll be able to get one i still mourn for the loss of your 005 couldn't you keep the diver as a backup in case you go to more dangerous places that requires a more robust watch i i just hate to have a watch just sitting around as a backup like that i just it just kind of goes against the grain um you know, so I don't know. And, and you know, back in the day, people wore watches with leather straps all the time. That's kind of what they wore. It, it was uncommon to have a bracelet back in the day. 
uh, you know, you go back to like the 30s and the 40s and stuff like that. Just about all the watches had leather straps, and and that was normal. And and they, you know, people just bought them and wore them. So they, I don't. I'm. And by the way, this is a guy who was anti leather strap, and I'll tell you about that. But anyway, let me catch up on the comments. Um, would be a while before she wears them all out. Yeah, a couple of years, probably maybe two or three years, would be my guess. But, you know, we can wait. I think that selling the 231 and getting an all, ghost, all gold sub would be a good move. If Chias made all gold divers, that would be the way to go. But they don't. Uh, go for the gold. <laughs> Kyle in the house. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I, like I say, I think I can wear the, the, the 002 all the time. I don't think I have a problem with that. Um, or day date could be the backup. There you go. Um, you see... I think you have to wear one of these for a while to understand what I'm talking about. I don't think you can understand by me just telling you, right? There's just something about wearing this watch, the way it feels on the wrist, the way it looks, the way the deployant works, just everything about it. There's just something about wearing it that is just so refreshing and so enjoyable that I just love putting it on. I mean... I know it sounds corny, it sounds strange, but, and I didn't think I would ever say this because I was always anti-leather strap guy. I was not for the leather strap deal. And I reluctantly, kicking and screaming, went for this watch. And even when I went to look at it the first time, I was thinking that I was going to look at it and not buy it. I was not planning on buying it. I did bring the money with me just in case, but, you know, I wasn't planning on buying it. And then I looked at it, I held it, I tried it on, we fooled around with it and so on. And I was just like, wow, this is pretty amazing. And then just like the 231, it wasn't until I wore it a while before I realized, wow, I was totally wrong about the leather strap thing. I was totally wrong. I get it now. I get it. They're comfortable. They feel good on the wrist. There's just something cool about a high quality leather strap that's stitched properly, that, that con over time it conforms to your wrist. There's just a feel that you just don't get with a bracelet. I'm sorry. You just don't get that feel with the, um, with the bracelet. So gold overload. <laughs> there you go. Um, Rolex would be a step backwards for Craig. Yes, I agree. It would be. Yes, it would. Uh, if gold doubles in price, would the price of gold watches do the same? It looks like they've already gone up quite a bit, Tom. Uh, and yes, I think gold, gold watch prices are going to go up. I think more for, because of demand than the price of the actual metal. There's not that much gold in each watch, right? And so... But I think as demand increases, and, and it looks like it's headed that way, it looks like the pendulum is swinging back away from steel stunners back to where it should be with gold stunners. I think the pendulum is swinging that direction. So I think it's going to be because of demand, not because of the price of the gold itself. Craig, how does it feel wearing the same brand for 40 years and switching for something better? It feels great. It feels, uh, I, I enjoy the fact that I can now put on my watch and I don't even have to check it for accuracy. I don't even, it doesn't even enter my mind. I just put it on and I go and I know it's going to be spot on accurate. And I know if I told the radio station, I'm going to call in at six minutes after the hour. I know that if I look at my watch and it's, you know, 30 seconds to go to six minutes after the hour, I know that that's the time. I don't have to second guess it. I don't have to look at my phone. I don't have to, you know... Uh, it's just a it's just a good feeling, and it's also a good feeling to know that I'm wearing a, an extremely well built piece of kit. I, I, as you guys know on the channel, I relentlessly pursue quality, relentlessly, and and it, maybe it took me forty years to find it, but but I found it. And I think Grand Seiko has improved over the last five or six years or so. I, th I think they've improved. They've upped their game. Uh, so there's that. Um, let's see here. What's it? Neither brand checks all the boxes for AGS or Rolex. No perfect watch yet. I agree. I agree. They should consult with us. We should come. We should design the perfect watch. 
Thoughts on putting a day date on a leather strap? Um, if it was a deployment, it might be okay, but I think the watch head is a little bit heavy for being on a leather strap. This is, this is more trim, thinner, and a little bit lighter watch head, so I think it lends to, it'll balance more with the deployment clasp as far as weight-wise, and so I, I think it might be a little bit top-heavy. The day date on a, I think maybe you better keep the day date on a president bracelet. That's my take on that. Um, let's see. I went to day to the AD to see a watch. They told me it should not be a big issue to get any day date. It seems it can be ordered and obtained relatively easily in relatively short time. So, so a day date can still be gotten at list price. It sounds like, um, but the used prices are clearly higher, clearly trending higher. I'll show you another example here in a minute. Present basin makes the day date. I, I kind of agree with that statement. Uh, Carlos, that is surprising. Okay. Um, quartz was never an option back in the days, in the day. Uh, no, not really. When they first came out, they were kind of like a thing, and some people bought them just because it was kind of a thing. But um, And some of us had G-Shocks for extreme use situations, but we usually didn't take the Rolexes off, uh, even in extreme situations. But, uh, yeah, they, they weren't a big thing for sure. Uh, can't watch right now. See you guys in a, in a half an hour if still live. Okay, we probably will be live because that's the official start time. Craig, having gotten the 002... Don't you get bored? Is it like the 002 is too good? You know, we were walking earlier. Uh, Brian and I were walking, and her faux pay bracelet she had it on. And it was cutting. It was catching the sunlight. I didn't have mine on. Um, and her gold uh, Grand Seiko was catching the light and stuff. And and I kind of looked over at it, and and she looked at it, and I said, I said, does that ever get old? You know, looking at that yellow gold as it catches the light and so forth. And she said, no. <laughs> And I think that's it. I, I don't. I don't think it. It ever gets old. Um, I think it just uh, is. Just what it is. I mean, yeah. I, I. I don't think having a high quality eighteen karat yellow gold watch ever gets old. And I don't think it's ever too good. I think it's just right. Selling my snowflake on Chrono Twenty Four. If anyone's interested, only a few months old, but selling for an Omega Seamaster. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why you're making that move. Why do you? Why are you getting rid of the snowflake? Do tell. Do tell. Because I don't know if I would get rid of the snowflake for an Omega Seamaster. Um, I don't know if I would make that move, but do tell. It seems like everything GS does right, Rolex gets wrong, and vice versa. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yeah, they should do a col collaboration watch. It could be awesome, but they would never do that. Oh, okay, I already showed that one. <clears throat> okay, let's show this other watch. Here is uh, a 118238. This is the six-digit piece with the solid center links. And I, on purpose, I picked a watch that w has an attractive dial. And you know, a lot of them have kind of ugly dials and have Roman numerals and all that stuff. But anyway, I, I picked an attractive watch. And let's go through it here. Now, see that? The, that looks like it has a gold dial. And the earlier one looked like it had a silver dial. So I don't know if they're getting their photos confused. Or maybe it's the lighting. I think it's the lighting. Yeah, I just think they're lousy photos. But anyway, this one, the reason I picked this, is it is an attractive piece. But look at the price. $30,000. I mean, with a small discount, you should be able to buy a new one for that. Uh, Dudley paid twenty eight five dollars for his brand new Date 840. He paid twenty eight five dollars for his brand new Date 840. What is going on with these prices, folks? What is going on with these prices? Um, Seamaster 300 or Aquatera? Yeah, which one is he getting? Seems like an odd move to dump the GS for the Omega. Okay. And uh, Snowflake is a bit too dressy, and I feel like the Seamaster on a rubber strap is a better everyday watch. I don't know about that. No, 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 no. That the 
the thing about the um, Snowflake is it's the perfect everyday watch. I mean, it's so comfortable on wrist, it just disappears on the wrist. And that titanium is very good on your skin. Um, that bracelet is very comfortable. Uh, no, I think the opposite is true. And I don't think the Snowflake is too dressy at all. I, I think it's a great all-around watch. It's a nice big watch. It's 41 mils. So if your wrist is, is a good size wrist... I think that makes it more, look more sporty having the bigger watch on. Uh, I, I, if you have a decent sized wrist and it looks good on your wrist, I would rethink that whole situation there. I would probably keep the snowflake. Just saying, snowflakes and all around are good point. Yes, super comfortable on wrist. So is the Aquaterra okay? Seamaster three hundred is more sporty. C correct. Um, I paid less than that for my white gold day date. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Carlos. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what's going on with all these prices. My only problem with the snowflake is the size. If it were 38 millimeter, it would be perfect. Yeah, it depends on the size of your wrist. I agree. I, for me, it was a little bit big to use as a dress watch. This 38 and a half mil was like perfect for me. Just, just big enough to give a nice presence, but not too big. The 41, I felt was too big for me to use as a dress watch. To wear in, like with a polo shirt like I have on now, it was perfect. The snowflake was perfect. But not as an all-arounder if you're going to use it as a dress watch under a shirt cuff. I thought it was a little bit large. So that's why I sold mine. And I got this instead. I was headed that direction, right? Headed the direction of this. And I, I ultimately got there. Maybe you're right, I just haven't gotten used to the spring drive yet. Oh my gosh, the spring drive is, is lovely, 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 lovely. Um, Snowflake is pretty flashy compared to an Omega. Yeah, but it looks good. It looks sharp. It looks classy, I think. Um, no wish the Snowflake was the size of Rich Soko. I'd buy that. I hear you. Found GS2 Dressy. Okay. Um... Seamaster is perfect sport. Aquaterra is perfect every day. All right. Real dress watch are not too big. That's correct. This is the upper limit, I would say, for my wrist size. Mine is 7.25 inches. This is the upper limit for a dress watch for me, 38.5 mils. Um, if my wrist was smaller, I'd want even smaller. And I'd be happy if this watch was, let's say, 37 mils or 38 mils, a little bit smaller. I'd be happy with that, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the 38 and a half. It works for me. And everybody that's seen it on my wrist, they basically said, yeah, it looks fine. doesn't look oversized or anything like that. Uh, GS straddles the line between dressing and sport depends on the case design as well. Yep. And like I say, I, I'm actually considering if I sold the 231 stunner, I'm actually considering Wearing this all the time, sport dress all the time. Again, back in the day, this is what people wore. They wore their watches on a leather strap. That's it. And if they, you know, if they were at a certain station in life and so forth, they might own a gold watch. It might have been a gift from their wife or whatever. And that's what they wear. They just wear the watch. Like the client of mine, PVI Furniture, that was here for a live stream, I asked him about his Rolex. He was wearing a Yachtmaster, steel and gold uh, Yachtmaster. And um, he didn't even know what model the watch was. He just bought it from the AD in Frederick, uh, Colonial Jewelers. And he just likes the watch and he's wearing it. And he didn't even know what the, what the model of the watch was. That's most watch buyers, by the way, guys. Most watch buyers go in and they look at the watches and they pick something they like. Or maybe even their wife picks it. And they get it and they wear it and... They don't even really know what it is half the time. That's probably most of the buyers. Most of the buyers aren't like us, aren't aware of all the different models and different nuances and, and so on and so forth. Most of them just go in and see something they like and just buy it. Maybe they know the name Rolex, right? Of course they know the name Rolex, but they might not know the particular model they're buying. They just see what they like and they just buy it. And then they wear it. So, yeah. Um... Okay, let's see. Did I read this one? Uh, cannot stand young man with dressy 45 millimeter big watches. <laughs> I didn't know a 45 millimeter watch could be dressy. 
Um, oh, you mean a man that's like dressed in a suit or something? And he's wearing like a forty. I know. And and when you see some of these uh, Grand Seiko executives, they're usually kind of small guys anyway with small wrists. And you see them wearing like a one of these big, thick, you know, sporty Grand Seikos with a suit and stuff. It just looks silly. It looks absolutely silly. So the, the whole big watch craze thing has been silly from the start. Just absolutely silly. Um, okay, what else? And we're not even up to the official start time, and we've almost gone through everything. <laughs> um, the reason I started early is I scheduled this for five, and I didn't know if I'd be back in time to do it earlier. But I actually wanted to do the show earlier because I've got something I have to do. And if I did a 5 o'clock show, it would have to be pretty short. And so when I got back earlier, I figured, okay, I'll go ahead and start early. So this way, at least I can do a longer show. Um, and so that's, that's why this whole thing turned out the way it has with me starting a little earlier. Thoughts on Patek? Uh, believe aquanaut if prices were not ridiculous um <clears throat> let me see if i can pull up a um a picture give me a second here Okay, I wanted to pull up a picture because anytime I talk about something, I always want to show it. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Um, <clears throat> let me hide this comment. Uh, oh, shoot. I, I hate these websites with all these silly pop-ups. Okay. Um, I, w I don't buy ugly watches, so this case design is just ugly. It's just no no better way for me to put it. Um, just the whole design of the case is just just poo poo ugly. Um, no, there are a lot of great options out there. This ain't one of them. Even the dial is ugly. It almost looks like you had some little kid and you gave him a crayon and you said, you know, let's let's put together a design for a watch and this is what the little kid comes up with, right? Um, no, I would full pass, full pass on ugly watches. Patek makes some attractive watches that ain't one of them. So no, no on that. Um, okay. What else do we have here? I have got the SBGN 003. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's try to pull that, that up. And this is the watch that, um, that of course, similar to the one I had, which was the 005. And this is the one with the black dial, which is really a great grab-and-go, use-anywhere, heavy-use watch because the 9F movement is robust. And this is a nice flat-on-the-wrist watch, very comfortable. So absolute great grab-and-go, do-anything, heavy-use watch. Absolutely, positively. Two big thumbs up on that. Craig, whether you like it or not, if you chart most hot watches, they put up great investment return numbers. Um, yeah, but you got to have a crystal ball. You got to know what watch to buy. And then they're not very liquid. They're not that easy to sell. And usually when you sell them, you have to pay a commission and all that. And at the end of the day, you're going to get much better returns long term with any quality investment. 
uh, w- where you can get, let's say, 10% return on your money, uh, clear after expenses and so forth, you're generally speaking going to be doing better um, uh, doing that. And of course, Bitcoin outperforms all of them significantly. I mean, it's not even a close call. You're going to get 200% a year on Bitcoin is what its traditional returns have been. And none of the hot watches have uh, have performed that well. So so watches are not good investments. It's best to buy the watch you like and uh, and wear the watch. Uh, Phil just released the crack and there you go. Um, I sent in a couple of photos of what might be the best looking GS if it were all yellow gold spring drive and had the snowflake dial, it would be perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and pull these up. <clears throat> yeah, that is absolutely stunning. That is absolutely stunning. That watch, the Patek Philippe Aquanaut that we looked at, I mean, compare the two. Compare how gorgeous this watch is. I mean, it's just not even a close call. And with the bead of rice uh, bracelet and everything, I mean, it just, that is an absolute stunner. And uh, here it is on wrist. I mean, you talk about a watch that would be comfortable on wrist. The only thing that would make that more comfortable would be if it was in titanium, right? If it was in titanium. Uh, but, but he's right. Can you imagine that watch in solid 18 karat gold with the spring drive? With the um, power indicator on the back like my 002 has? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I say so. Yes, I say so. Um, let's see here. BTC has no use, Craig, no different uh, to expensive flowers gaining popularity. It's got no use. See, you can tell fellas early in the, in, the, uh, in the rabbit hole. He hasn't gone down the Bitcoin rabbit hole very deep. He hasn't learned much. He's, he's at the tulip bubble phase. Um, it's going to take you about a year or two to get further down the rabbit hole, fella, to where you'll understand the use case. But let me give you an example. Let's say somebody was in, um, let's say a Jew was in uh, Germany in 1941, okay? And they wanted to leave Germany, and they wanted to take their wealth with them, all right? I would say that that would have been a great use case for Bitcoin, I think they would have loved to have had Bitcoin available to them, okay? But they didn't. So they had to leave with what they could carry, and usually a lot of times whatever they could carry would be taken from them. And they ended up coming here with nothing, and most of them built wealth anyway. But it would have been nice if they would have been able to bring their wealth with them. Bitcoin frees people up to own their wealth and have it and take it with them anywhere they go and to be a sovereign individual, I would say that's a pretty significant use case. Okay? Think about it. Think about that use case. We've never had that before. You see, that's the thing. We've never had it before. You've never had a situation where you could store your wealth somewhere and have it be safe from the government confiscating it, from a lawyer suing you and a judge saying you've got to give that over, You've never been able to take your wealth and have it safe. You've never been able to be your own bank, if you will. You've always had to trust a third party with your wealth. And that third party can turn on you, whether it be a government, a bank, whatever. Whether it be the, uh, the local uh, authorities who, who have the records of who owns your house, right? All of that can be monkeyed with. If you've got Bitcoin and you've got it secure and you've got your own secret words memorized in your head, they can't take that Bitcoin from you, all right? 
I would say that's a pretty significant use case. All right, here we go. I have a three watch collection, GMT, SBG, and 003, Chronograph, Longines, Big Eye, Aviation, and Diver, Tessat, Sea Star. Any thoughts, Craig? I'm not familiar with the others, but I love the SBG and 003. Absolutely. But I'm not familiar with the others, but yeah. If you want to send a photo, we'll be happy to take a look. My name, craigship at gmail.com, craigship at gmail.com. Send a picture. I'll be happy to take a look. Okay, so we got that in there twice, I guess. All right. So, um, so yeah, I mean, most people, when they first learned about Bitcoin, reacted the same way I reacted. Oh, it's a scam. Uh, what what start? Somebody just created this thing on the internet. Oh, duh! You know what? What's going to keep somebody else from creating one? Okay, you can be, have an unlimited supply, right? What's so special about Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? We all went through this. We all challenged it. We all thought that it was crazy. Here comes a guy that's still crazing it. Still thinks it's crazy. Let me put him on speaker here. Put him on speaker. Hey, you're live on the radio and TV. What's up? Oh, wow. You started early. I had an embarrassing story, which I guess I'll hold for later. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, we did. I started early. I had a five o'clock show scheduled and I started early because I'm hungry. And, and as you've noted before, I get mean when I get hungry. And so too strong, I, uh, short, a little short tempered. Yeah. So, aggressive, yeah. Hostile. Yeah. So I have to get the show in so that I can eat. Um, but we've had a great discussion, and yeah, I'll let you know when I wrap up. It won't be too long. Okay. So have fun. Yeah. Carry on. Bye. Bye. All right. So anyway, um, it takes a while, and then at some point, most people who take a close look at Bitcoin and really study it start thinking, hmm, there might be something here. And then every year that it survives, we have something called the Lindy effect, okay? Every year that it su survives, it's more likely that it's going to continue to survive. And so the Lindy effect is starting to kick in to where it keeps surviving. Every time the bubble pops, right? They say, oh, okay, the bubble popped in 2017. It went down from almost $20,000 to $3,000 or whatever. Oh, no, it's all over. The bubble popped. Then the bubble reinflated again, right? And it went way up, it way up. And then the bubble popped again. And then it went down. Now the bubble's reinflating again. And they're starting to think, well, maybe these aren't bubbles. Maybe these are stepping stones. Maybe if you, if you look back, if you step back and you look at the chart, if you go back far enough and you look at the chart, you see that it's a 45-degree angle up, the value of Bitcoin, over 11 years. It's a nice 45-degree angle up. Okay? And you start seeing this and you start thinking to yourself, well, do you know what happens if this thing actually survives? What happens if this thing doesn't die? What happens if it starts if it continues growing at, at a rate of doubling a year, what, what's been happening is the number of people in the network using the network has been doubling every year. You start asking yourself questions, well, what happens if this keeps happening? What happens if we go from hundreds of millions of people using this thing to billions of people using this thing? What happens if that happens? What happens if all that happens and the, and the supply is still capped at 21 million? And what happens if the supply is consistent and the demand keeps increasing? What happens un, under those scenarios? You start asking yourself those questions and then you look at it and you say, okay, from an investment standpoint, you look at a, a potential asymmetric return. You, you look at the situation where, okay, let's say I buy one Bitcoin today for, what is it, 37000 I, I don't know what it is last time I looked. Whatever it is. Let's say it was $30,000. let us say I bought one Bitcoin for $30,000, okay? I'm putting $30,000 at risk. That $30,000 could go to zero, okay? So my downside is $30,000, all right? What is my upside? If Bitcoin survives and a lot of people around the world start using it and it keeps doubling every year, okay, it keeps growing and growing and growing and growing, what's my upside? 
that one Bitcoin might be a million dollars one day. So my downside is 30,000. My upside is a million. Okay, that's called an asymmetric return. That's the kind of risk investment that some investors look for. They look for something that has a potential huge upside. Now, every year that goes by, and, and as the price goes higher, the upside is less, and the downside is, is actually more, right? Because you're having to invest more to make that upside. So the, the, the asymmetric return is lessened, okay? But right now, it's, it's still a pretty great uh, potential return for the amount invested, I think. That's how that works. Let me know what you think. Um, thoughts on AP uh, 15202? <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm going to pull up a picture here. Okay, again... Um, put that up there like that. Again, here, here's my thoughts. I don't buy ugly watches. Why would I buy an ugly watch when there are a lot of great looking watches out there? Why would I ever buy something with an integral bracelet with all the limitations of an integral bracelet, right? First of all, it's ugly. It just, it just looks like something from the seventies, right? And in a bad way. Okay. Some stuff from the seventies was actually good, right? But some stuff not so good. This would fall into the not so good. The integral bracelet thing is a total fail. Okay, it's not the way to do a watch. The the thin, real thin hands and so forth, not good for a sport watch. The exposed screws and all looks hokey. They think it looks cool, right? But it looks hokey. The whole thing is ugly. My God, you could buy for that kind of money. You could buy a date eight. You could buy an 18 karat yellow gold date eight and wear it and have something that's gorgeous on your wrist. Absolutely gorgeous on your wrist. Why in, in the world would you spend that kind of money, $43,000, and buy something that's ugly? Why would you do that? Ah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we can do. We can't help some of these people. Some of these people have to go out and buy ugly watches. Makes me wonder, do the world sequence must be correct or just the words are needed? Do the word sequence must be correct or the words are needed? Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure <laughs> that they need to be in order. As I can see, it seems words must be in order. Okay, there you go. Um, day date crushes the AP. <laughs> Duh. Um, I like to eat apple cut pieces not directly eating the full thing also any trip i end purchasing a new corkscrew as i do not pack it father's day is approaching email sent with my ordered gift okay we'll take a look uh pull up the day date ruby diamond dial 41 put it in chrono uh put it in chrono thoughts um <clears throat> All right, here, give me a second. Okay, so there's a couple of watches that are coming up here, and I would say of these that I'm glancing at right here, um, 
They all look pretty tacky. Let me let me see. I would probably hmm this one. Let's see. Yeah. That would probably be the one, uh, but I, I'm just not a fan of diamonds on any man's watch, or rubies for that matter. Uh, but yeah, of those ones we just saw there, that would probably be the one that I would, um, I would pick. So there you go. Um, oh, did I show it? Yeah, I think I showed it. Let me hide this so you can see more of it. Yeah. Black dial 41. Let's see here. Uh, pull up day date. Okay, done that. Um, uh, okay. So, yeah. But, again, I just did the general search. And, yeah, I, I'm not going to pull up a whole bunch of different ones. And, and first of all, I, I wouldn't get the um, 41 millimeter. Uh, I wouldn't get the date date two. I think, the, wasn't that the one that was 41? And I, and I really probably wouldn't get a date date 40 either. I think they're too big on most people's wrists. Um, so yeah, if I was going to get a date 840, I would just get the black dial, the one like, uh, Dudley has, it looks gorgeous. Um, let's see here, uh, fellow, how is currently New York regarding safety? Would you walk on the street with that wearing short sleeves? Um, have you tried the GS white birch? I have not. I have not. I think Steve have showed, has showed them on a previous show, but no, I have not. And I haven't been to uh, Little Treasury for a long time, since the whole lockdowns and everything. I, I haven't been there uh, for over a year, to actually, to his store. So, yeah. He should start doing more shows. By the way, how do you like the dark blue? I, I changed the, I had the light blue color for the theme here, and I changed it to the dark blue. I much prefer the dark blue. We had that for Grand Seiko, the Grand Seiko theme, but for the Mid-Atlantic TV, I had a lighter blue. So I switched it to the darker blue. <clears throat> so, um, all right, so we're back at our official start time, and the for those that are tuning in now and thinking that this is the start of the show, we actually already had the show, and we're going to wrap it up here fairly soon. Uh, but you can watch the rerun of everything. The message in the opening was that gold prices are headed up. It's my personal opinion, not financial advice, but this is what I think is going to happen. And silver prices are going to go up. And we already showed some examples. Let me pull them up here of watches. Um, that's not what I wanted to show. Let me go back to this here and then I'll find it. Um, oh, here we go. And so we showed some examples of these high prices of 18238 day dates. And we showed this one in particular, which I like. And this one, and this is, was just to show how high the prices have gone. This is a six-digit one one eight two three eight. So just de just demonstrating the prices going through the freaking roof on these things. So get so strap in and uh, look for gold prices on actual gold and gold watches to continue to uh, to trend higher. Craig, you still think about going to Japan? Yes, at some point I might go. I might. Craig, what's the best spaghetti and why? I haven't had much spaghetti that was not good. <laughs> I don't eat it very often though because it's not really on my on my diet. But yeah, it's it's good stuff. Uh, I've sent you a picture of the watch. I went to see it the AD. I really liked it. Okay, we will pull that up. Oh yeah, I w that's right. Uh, hard to see the time on those 
light dial day dates. I agree with you. I agree with you. Not as much contrast. Okay, stand by. <clears throat> Okay, so here is the uh, knife that Carlos sent the photo. I like that. I like that knife. And let's do more pictures here. So... I like it. <laughs> Carlos trolling. <laughs> Looking at a tutor. Actually, I think he's actually considering buying a tutor. Why on earth would somebody with a decent watch, at least a couple of decent watches that I know of, I think he's got a he's got a, a fifty one ninety six I believe, and he's got a date eight forty. Why would somebody with a couple of decent watches, and I think he's got still has a date just, I think he's got several good watches. Why would he consider something like that? I don't know. He's a youngster still, though. He's a young guy, Carlos. He's a, he's entitled to make it make mistakes. Um, Hard to see the time. Okay, we read that. And we, uh, solid silver watch. Okay. Um, and Craig, did Bree get a chance to meet that helper boy you had a while back? <clears throat> no. No, he was gone before she came on the scene. He wouldn't have been able to help her anyway. He, he couldn't close deals. <clears throat> he couldn't close deals to save his life. <clears throat> so he wouldn't have been able to help Bree. Um, okay, isn't that knife uh, of a French design? I forgot the name. Okay, Carlos can, yeah, there, yeah, Carlos put it in there. Um, <clears throat> I like how the tutor is the experimental brother of Rolex. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, it's nice looking, but not a tutor fan. Yeah, that, that, that ugly hour hand. Are you kidding me? I mean, just hideous. Just, just, just horrendous hour hand on that thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, wait, hold on. Why are you early? I missed everything. <laughs> yeah, we showed a bunch of day dates, Derek. We showed a bunch of day dates. You're going to have to watch the rewind. Watch the rewind. Coffee is for closers. There you go. Um, we had a great show, Derek. We talked a lot about day dates and, uh, Carlos is going to try to, um, Line me up with a, a brand new day date with the ceramic center links, ceramic sleeves in the center links uh, at a good price, uh, similar to the price he got on his um, day date 40. He's going to try to line something up for me, for moi, and we'll keep you posted if he's able to uh, do that, if Carlos is able to do that, because I think I might have to make the move. I think I might have to get a day date. I tell you what I, I think I should get. Um, shoot, what color dial do they have on the Day Date Thirty Six? They don't have any good colors, do they? Maybe I have to get the Day Date Forty with the black dial and yellow gold. Maybe that's what I have to get. The Dudley watch, the watch just like Dudley has. So let's see if Carlos can get me a good deal on a Day Date Forty with the black dial. See if he can get a similar deal to what he got um, on his white gold uh, day date and see what we can do here. Maybe we have to do some horse trading. Um, just get any, please. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, 
Wait, Craig, are you get you're getting a day date? What happened uh, to not going backwards? Yeah, I, geez, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just, maybe I just have to have one. I don't know. Derek, Derek is a very persuasive guy, you know, and, and if, if Carlos can get me the deal, I mean, uh, maybe we'll have to get a deal, but it'd have to be a deal. I'd have to have a deal. I got to have a deal. I originally found your channel when researching Grand Seiko. Are watches the main focus of this channel? All the best from Florida. No. No, no, no. We talk about them a lot, but I'd rather them not be the main focus of the channel. Um, we talk about a lot of things, but uh, yeah. Um, so we'll see how that whole thing goes. But yeah, I'm trying to get more content on the channel also. We talk about a lot of high-end stuff, a lot of high-end clothing, um, uh, vehicles. We talk about all kinds of things. But yeah, and we do end up fixating on watches quite a bit um so anyway but i i hope you got yourself a nice grand seiko because i love them i've got a 002 stunner on here this is the sbgy 002 sbgy 002 there's a link in the description to my grand seiko page on my website i got a whole page dedicated to grand seiko because i wore rolexes for 40 years and then i transitioned to uh, grand seiko so I got a whole page that talks about that. Um, let's see. I agree that you have to have one, Craig, says Kyle in the house. Uh, the rotation of the O2 date eight can't be beaten together. The two pieces check all boxes. There you go. Um, but you're thinking of getting rid of the diver, Craig. Uh, you may as well stay to a three-watch rotation. I wouldn't be able to keep them all running, though. I, I don't think I'd be able to give the day date and the diver enough wrist time to keep them both running. I think I would have to wear the day date uh, most of the time and then wear the the um, 002 some of the time. I think that's what I have to do. See, that's the, that's the other issue with Rolexes. See, you, you forget when you've been out of the Rolex thing for a while, but now I'm starting to remember Another issue with the Rolexes is, is they require more wrist time to stay wound. They're, they, they, I was having problems with a two-watch rotation keeping them both running because they like to get about eight hours a day of wrist time, depending on how active you are. And it's, it's tricky to do that. Um, and so that is another issue, is trying to keep two auto-wind watches running. Now, the Grand Seiko auto-winds tend to not take as much wrist movement, especially the um, spring drive models. You can probably get away with about four hours of wear a day, uh, maybe six. But the, the, the Rolexes tend to like about eight hours a day. As I'm getting to know, Craig, purchasing a day date would give us hundreds of shows about the lack of precision. <laughs> I don't think I would. No, I wouldn't bash the, the watch. Probably wouldn't be happy with the lack of accuracy, but I don't think I would bash it all the time. They're beautiful watches. Um, let's see here. Um, I own a GMT Pepsi. Love it. Like own a gold sub. blue. So you'd like to own a, go, a gold blue sub. Yes, that would be a good move. And congratulations on the GMT Pepsi. I hope you got it for retail. I hope you didn't pay over retail. But yeah, that's a good one. Um, the day date has a 72... Two hour reserve, I think my sub does. I can let it set for two full days with no issue. And but how much do you have to wear it for it to wind back up? Um, so yeah, they've improved that. It sounds like they've improved that aspect of it, Kyle. So that's good. <clears throat> if you sell the diver and place it with a Rolex, you end up with the same problem, if not wearing the OO2 more. I agree. I agree. It doesn't solve that problem. Matter of fact, it might even make it worse because, like I said, the day date might even require more wrist time. Uh, yeah, I think that I might have to just sell the diver and just wear the 002 and just skip the day date thing altogether. That might be what I have to do. I don't know. This is confusing, folks. This is it's just putting a lot of pressure on me, too. It's a it's very confusing, very confusing situation. Ah, uh, boy, I've got to figure this out. All right. <clears throat>
on that note, we're going to wrap this puppy up. It's been a good one. We've been going for quite a while. And uh, let's see. We've got one more, one more comment here. Let's bring these comments in. Um, mm, bought GMT at retail from my local retail. Good. Good move. Um, Craig, obviously the answer is to wear both watches at the same time. <laughs> oh, God. If I left my day date on Friday afternoon and I wear it on Monday morning to use to be running. Uh, if if I left my day date on Friday afternoon and wear it on Monday morning, it used to be running, but not always. Okay. This is on the day date 40. Okay. Gotcha. Good, good inside information, Carlos. Thank you for that. And Carlos is laughing out loud. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for for tuning in and uh <laughs> boozer says wait can't do that sorry i'm hungry i'm hungry <laughs> what about bitcoin <laughs> we talked about that earlier you're just trying to extend the show regret the loss of accuracy when you go you'll regret the loss of accuracy when you go back to i agree i don't think i'm going back i don't think i'm going back carlos says we can end now <laughs> okay thank you folks